And now, prepare your ear holes for penetration as we bring you another great podcast from the Poop Culture Extended Universe. Hey dudes and dudettes, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Be Kind and Rewind podcast. A podcast chock full of everything that is nostalgic about the 80s, 90s, and more. Where we chat with our favorite celebrities about our nostalgic VHS days. This episode... We're busting out the bag of jelly beans and using our ninja nudity as I'm joined by the actor that we've watched use CDs and laxative as legitimate ninja defenses while introducing the world to the ageless jingle of Rocky Loves Emily as Colt in Three Ninjas franchise. So I'm joined by actor, musician, and martial artist Max Slade. <laughs> hey, Carlos. Nice introduction, man. Thank you. Hey, man. It's a, it's a lifetime in the making after watching Three Ninjas like for about the last 25 years or so, so... Yeah, 25 years almost exactly. The 25th anniversary was just uh, in August, I believe. Yeah, I saw that and I saw like, the 23-year anniversary this year for kickback and all that good stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll get into all that good stuff. But the first thing that I want to jump into is like, uh, first of all, thanks for taking the time to come on the podcast. Uh, so many people, once I listed that you were going to be a guest, were like over the top excited. So I know a lot of people listening right now have been waiting in years of anticipation to hear hear from Max Lay Colt himself about, <laughs> about some of these things we're going to talk about today. So, but like, as I was doing my initial research, trying to, you know, trying to find you look for you i saw that there's a ton of you know max slade cult uh, uh, social media accounts and i saw that at some point recently you had to just go out there and reassume your place as the real max slade online so what was your like initial thoughts getting online and seeing all these accounts um it was a a, a friend of mine who uh alerted me to the fact that there was somebody using my name and uh you know, which wasn't really that new a thing to me because I know there's like a few Facebook accounts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there was there was somebody who was actually like using it every day and and actually being very active with it and pretending to be me. So, and, yeah, you know, um, that was fine. Actually, I felt kind <laughs> of honored, but I also didn't want to be misrepresented. So yeah, I had to had to kind of put myself out there and let people know that. Uh, that that wasn't me. Yeah, exactly. And like, like, like you said, you're probably used to seeing some of those things, but maybe not to that to that extent, which is fine. Like you said, it's it's flattering. You got a lot, a lot of fans out there. People, you know, fans of Colt, the the character, and of course of you as an actor and musician and martial artist as well. So yeah, it can be flattering. But like you said, you probably want to make a little bit more presentation of yourself. So you want to make sure that everybody knows it's you making some of these statements and not somebody else for you or in on behalf of you without you knowing it yet. Exactly. Yeah. Don't don't want uh, misinformation getting put out there. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, like I said, I just wanted to get into that because, like I said, I know a lot of people out there are huge fans and just kind of jumping into like, you know, your early career. You know, your first role was in 1989 movie Parenthood and then the TV series under the same name. But you played right. two different two different characters. You played young Gil Buckman in the movie, but then you played Gil's son in the TV series. So which is, you know, not too crazy of a jump, but I guess if things were, if it were happening nowadays, it'd be called all kinds of internet speculation as to why that happened. But yeah. and back in the day, they just made it work. But you got to work with some pretty uh, um, heavy hitter, big heavy hitters in Hollywood, like, you know, Ron Howard, Howard was the director, Steve yep. Martin, Rick Moranis. What was that like being on set with some of those actors? Um, it was, it was amazing. Um, although to be honest, at the time, I really I wasn't familiar with all these movie stars. <laughs> mm-hmm. I saw that my my parents were like starstruck. Oh uh, yeah, but I didn't know who anyone was, so it kind of, you know, wasn't. And this is probably like before Honey I Shrunk the Kids, so Rick Moranis hasn't really like hit that Disney, you know, kind of uh, uh, persona, right. I guess. Right. Um, but I love that movie. It's probably my favorite movie that I was, you know, honored to be a part of. Yeah. So, what, what was the the, the uh, process of landing that role? Uh, I I just auditioned for it, like I auditioned for so many other parts. Mm. I I started going on acting auditions when I was six, and it was two years later that I got the part in Parenthood, and uh, yeah, I was I was ecstatic. It was awesome. 
Yeah, and so like uh, with that, you know, you had your 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 scenes in the movie, and then so when they went to uh, onto the production of the TV series, was that like an automatic thing? Like you had the role, or did you had to re audition for the role as uh, as Kevin. That's a good question. I think, uh, well, it definitely gave me, uh, you know, a head start. Yeah. yeah, but I'm, but as I recall, I still had to audition for it. I mean, that's fair. It's fair, and like, it's, I guess nepotism and things like that can only go so far in Hollywood for right. start making people start doing the actual process over. But, but on on that and, show, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I I actually auditioned for that part for the part of Kevin uh in the movie too it, okay. it came, came down to me and the kid who eventually got the part um they weren't sure which role they wanted to give to each of us but then it turned out that he was going to be kevin and i was going to be young gill well so, nice well it worked out because maybe they had your audition reel from the first one like all right well let's just transfer him over it worked out so like you said you had that little advantage going in so it worked out because you know, working on the TV series, you got to work with a, a young Leonardo DiCaprio and Thora Birch. You know, of course, everyone yep. knows Leo from Titanic, but Thora from Hocus Pocus and Monkey Trouble and things like that. So you guys were siblings on the on the show. Uh, what was the experience like that working with each other as a as a young siblings on on a, on a set? Um, we got along great. Um, I yeah, uh, and I, I remember really liking Leonardo DiCaprio. He was really fun to hang out with. And he was like three or four years older. Mm -hmm. And he was nice enough to, you know, let me come over to his house and play Nintendo games with him. Nice. Were you over there with Tobey Maguire and the, and the crew, the, the Leo squad? Uh, no, I think that was, <laughs> I think this was before that. Nice, nice. Yeah, well, uh, what were like some of the big differences working on like the, the, the TV set, then the preparation, I guess, as a young actor, working on the TV set, then like on a movie? Um, I guess on a, on a movie, you have more time to learn your lines because, mm -hmm. you know, you have the script way in advance and, uh, on a TV show, it's something new every week. Yeah. And like, you have that short, you know, shooting period and probably less takes for everything, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of one on one. Did you kind of learn anything from anybody like on the movie sets or on the TV sets that you kind of took with you on the other movies that you did? Um, it definitely helped having some, you know, on camera time. Um, mm -hmm. there's an adjustment period for that, you know, learning how to, how to resist the urge to look at the camera, for example, <laughs> straight into the camera's soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, like as any, like anybody like walk up to you, it's like, you know, when, when you make sure you don't do this or make sure when you're on this, don't do that. No, no one gave you the, that sage older actor advice or anything like that. Um, not directly, no. Something Actors observational you all at, learned? Yeah, yeah. It was more observational. Um, actors tend to be pretty pretty cool about not telling each other what to do. Yeah, I could see that too. It's like you don't want to give away too many tra uh, secrets of the trade, especially your your own if it's working kind of a thing. Right. And, and also, you know, actors, you know, can have fragile egos and don't want to be told that they're not, you know, <laughs> doing it perfectly already. That is true. So yeah, you're right. So maybe maybe the sage advice is only only come out to when somebody's like super bitter. It's like I'm gonna give him the wrong advice. And it's like you should go do this. Uh, yeah. So be on the lookout for those you young actors getting into the business. That's uh, our first first lesson of the day. Um, but uh, yeah. So like I said, just want to talk about Parenthood. I know that was the first uh, you know one of your first few gigs getting into acting at such a young age. But you know, it wasn't long after Parenthood um, that you landed the next I your iconic role to many of us. Thanks to to a fine mixture uh, of Home Alone and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because we can say that because it was printed right on the box of the VHSs. So, um, it sure was. Yeah. So, and, and this was for Three Ninjas in 1992. They were three brothers learning the ways of a ninja, but what started as a game suddenly turned real. Those kids. We should run. We should hide. We should kick their butt. And I read that you know you're well into your karate career too of course before you uh, got into three ninjas so tell us a little bit about that like you were, was it a brown belt or something like that you by the time you got to uh, audition for three ninjas yeah that's right um i had actually been doing karate longer than i'd been acting um i started taking karate lessons when i was five um and like i said i started auditioning when i was six so yeah it was uh 
it was a it was a confluence of both things in my life that I that I loved. Um, it, it was actually a, a a dream come true to be honest, because I loved ninja movies. Who didn't you know as an eighties kid? Exactly. Well, was it like a, one of those auditions like you saw in the newspaper, or you just happened to like hear about it from the right right time, right timing kind of thing? Um, no, I had a I had a talent agent who was uh, setting up my auditions. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, it was just one of many, you know. Um, so did they? Uh, did you have to, of course, probably incorporate some of the karate in the auditions, or was it more just character driven when you went to audition? I actually didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't demonstrate any karate until I think the fourth audition, mm-hmm. and and even then, as I recall, they didn't like ask me to. It was just something that I wanted to show them. It was like, hey, I you can just start doing your own like kata and stuff like that right there. Yep. It's yep. like, oh, he's he's doing something. Okay. Yeah. Did you audition for uh, Cole uh, first off, or did you like all three? You're kind of like I know sometimes they have kids audition for all three characters and kind of make the decision from there. Oh, no, I don't remember auditioning for any other parts. I think it was always going to be Colt. Nice. So, yeah, you knew from right off the bat, Colt's like the, he could be like the Raphael of the group. They need somebody with a uh, little extra edge on them, probably. They're just like, we're just going to, we're going to profile these kids. Yeah, I like that analogy. Raphael was my favorite. <laughs> for sure, man. That's I mean, that's how I always saw Colt growing up. Like he's the Raphael of the group, and we had uh, Tum Tum was Michelangelo, and then we had Rocky as Leo. Of course, we had no Donatello, but maybe Emily could be a sidekick Donatello on the on the side. Who knows? Yeah, but yeah, yeah that that's that's how that's how I viewed it. I feel like um, so. Well, then awesome. So when you landed the role, you guys started um, filming. Um, you start working with uh, you know a renowned Asian actor Victor Wong at the time. So were you guys? aware of some of the accolades he has, some of the movies he'd been in, or is this one of those you didn't really know going in? Had me. Oh, uh, Michael. What? If I hadn't stopped the car, you would have been called Pancake by now. <laughs> you would have stopped. Okay, guys, what now? <laughs> Let's attack him again. <sighs> ah, two lessons you have to learn from this battle. Number one, never attack unless you're going to win. And listen to? Don't climb a tree that's full of thorns. Ooh. <laughs> no, I, I, I had not seen uh, Big Trouble in Little China or anything else mm-hmm. that he had done. So, no. Well, it's, it was kind of good. Like you said, with, as an actor, you, cannot, you, have, you don't have that, like, uh, maybe a starstruck kind of feeling when you get there. You can just kind of get to work and, you know learn from them as a person as opposed to like the star that you know the know them as yeah for sure yeah like it, yeah it when i worked with tom hanks i definitely knew who he was and that took mm-hmm. a little time to adjust to 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 you know not acting starstruck around him yes yeah, in, in apollo 13 right yeah yeah uh, we'll talk about that a little bit too um but uh, so so getting back into Three Ninjas, so when you guys started filming, at what point did they feel like you guys could do your own stunts? Because I know, especially you, it looks like you were doing a lot of your own stunts uh, from, for mostly action scenes. Yeah, we did uh, almost all of our own like fight choreography. We didn't do any actual, you know, what you would consider stunts, anything mm-hmm. that anything that would uh, endanger our lives. Um and we also didn't insurance do, wouldn't cover. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything that would have to halt, you know, filming while we were in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. Um and some of the uh gymnastic stuff was not us because, you know, I never I wasn't a gymnast, but um we but had yeah. a couple of somersaults in there that looked pretty solid. Yeah, I learned they we actually had gymnastics training for two weeks right before filming and uh I was able to do a round off to a back handspring and a, a front flip off a trampoline. So, yeah, I, I had I had some moves. Well, nice. Yeah, and and of course, Three Ninjas introduced us to one of the coolest bedrooms of all time. You know, with the bunk beds, you had the trampoline. You guys playing Mario Brothers three. You even had the sensor from you knew when mom and dad were coming. So like. That 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 itself in the movie uh, was made je- made me jealous as a kid. So I was like, "Can I just get two more brothers so I can have a room like this?" Especially the little can thing, which I don't know if that would actually work in real life. Is that something that would work in real life? I think it would if it has. Is it the string situation that would make that work? Hello, hello. Okay, calling all cars. Calling all cars. Be on the lookout for it. Hello, hello. 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 H
Rocky? Rocky, is that you? Oh, whoa! Dudes! Dudes! Come here, come here, come here! Uh, come over. Come to the front door of my house right away! <laughs> I think as long as the wire is taut, yeah. But actually, it's it's kind of like it's bent around pulleys and stuff, though. So I don't know if the vibrations would carry. Actually, yeah, it, it was a great concept. It made me want to do it with neighbors, neighbor friends when I saw it happening. So, like I said, the, the room uh, people people brought up multiple times on social media how that room was the best one so far. Um, just kind of getting some things I read about. Um, I saw that. It, IMDB quoted that saying that you uh, and the character or the actor who played Rocky, Michael uh, Trenner, were like you know really close like brothers. Do you guys still remain the same? Do you keep in touch and things like that? No, we haven't kept in touch. Uh, but but yeah, during the course of the filming, uh, we were we were we were good friends. We had we had real chemistry. Uh, all three of us actually. It was it was a very brotherly relationship that we had. Yeah, when the Chad Chad Powers has played Tum Tum, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So you guys, you know, when you met each other, what was like the initial reaction? Did they have like they have like those, you know, chemistry tests, or did you guys just kind of hit it off the bat, you know, right when you met each other? Um, no, they never. They didn't like. They didn't audition us together. We were all auditioned separately, mm-hmm. and so you know, there wasn't any sort of like chemistry test as far as that goes. But, um. No, we were, we all just got along great from the beginning. Well, I mean, it seemed like you guys like naturally came together, like you know, like the bickering and kind of you know, making fun of each other, and then like showing the love. It all seemed pretty genuine in regards to either a really good friendship or brother. So either way, it, it worked out perfectly. Um, some other stuff too that I saw that originally in the movie Colt's name was Pony, but then in the international versions it's Mustang. So do, have you ever been called Mustang by like any international fans? No, no, I haven't. Huh, um, yeah. But uh, funny, you should bring that up. Uh, in, in the original script, the name was Pony, and uh, it was my idea to change it to Colt because I thought Pony was wasn't uh, wasn't masculine enough. Well, at that it was. I feel like if I've been too close, like Pony Boy, stay golden, Pony Boy. You probably wouldn't be getting <laughs> yeah. that your whole life. So now, yeah, Colt was – that's a great suggestion because, like I said, that uh, – I don't know if Mustang would have been pretty good, but Pony, yeah, Pony was a little too on the light side. Colt's right perfectly right there in the middle. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, well, like I said, I wasn't sure because I read that. I was like, well, I wonder if, you know, if he ever sees any international fans. They're like, Mustang. He's like, what? Or did you know that they call they changed it to Mustang in the international versions? I, I saw some uh, I saw some tweets, you know, referencing uh, – Rocky mm-hmm. Mustang and Tum Tum, and I, I kind of pieced it together from that. But, but yeah, no, I've, I've, um, I did watch a version that was dubbed in Spanish. That was kind of a trip. Oh man, like did you, was your was uh, your voice like super deep and like you know uh, super? Uh, it uh, was. Yeah. Have you have you seen it? <laughs> It sounded no, like I it was an adult. I, I've, I've seen my fair share of Spanish translations, so I imagine they just had some 38-year-old guy do your do your part. That's that's what it sounded like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure, I'm sure if we check out like the Swedish and Asian versions, same situation. But it all the magic still comes through for sure. Um, uh, other thing, too, that I read that uh, during the – the uh, the famous basketball scene where Rocky defies gravity uh, during the I guess filming at some point you got a bloody no- nose uh, were you guys getting into it with the uh, the acting the acting bullies or how did that get da- go down Oh no there were no scraps uh, <laughs> I don't remember how that happened it was, I, I, it was definitely an accident of some kind probably just got hit with the basketball or something. Yeah, and I uh, I saw the I saw that you retweeted that Hulu had put up the director's cut, and I think I've seen scenes of it, but never seen the actual full movie. So of course, you know, I I had to watch it and see what the difference was. And so I see the uh, basketball scenes different. I don't know if we will spoil too much for those who haven't seen it, but the basketball scenes different. Definitely some different scenes in there. The ending, which <laughs> it's the little add-on at the end, which is great. I. Uh, I can see why they cut it out for like influencing children to make a, a certain decision, but I loved it. <laughs> I love the uh, how it went down, and you know what? Who cares? We're going to talk about it. That rock that Emily gave Rocky the okay to show off and beat the crap out of the bullies, which to me, <laughs> my jaw dropped when I watched that. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I I gotta say I like that version better. Um, I think they probably changed it in part to to get a PG rating because it was yeah. a, little, a little too PG thirteen. 
but uh, but yeah, I think I think it just it works better that we lose the basketball game and then you know get that redemption at the end. Yeah, because like uh, I mean, and I've always seen the versions where you won the basketball game and then the, it didn't have that add-on ending, uh, and then some other you know add-on like deleted scenes throughout the uh, the movie. But that added scene at the end was like, yeah, you could tell they were trying to avoid like a PG thirteen rating, probably in like not wanting to influence kids into making a I guess quote unquote better decision. But really, that's the ending with Rocky kicking the shit out of that kid. I was like, this is awesome. This is totally what I would have loved to see as a kid and. I, of course, we all want that version, but you know, for business purposes, they was like, let's go PG and and, and get as many butts and seats for this right, kind of yeah. situation. But uh, I'm glad that they put that out there, though, because that is awesome to know that that version is there, uh, so we can see the uh, uh, Rocky and everybody getting their redemption from the the bikes getting stolen, or at least losing the battle in the basketball game. Um, yeah. And so, and so yeah, so that was the the stuff about Three Ninjas, uh, kind of going into the other movies. We that you guys did we had three ninjas kick back the three ninjas are back the legend about the dagger could open the door to a cave of gold i want the dagger in my hands tomorrow he's gone that means that the cabin's empty rock and roll let's murder wise you've heard of ingenuity right well this is ninjanuity you guys were after the dagger wait we gotta help grandpa now they're going to the land where the code of the ninjas began. Three ninjas kick back. Uh, so after the success of Three Ninjas, uh, we were blessed with two more. We had Three Ninjas Kick Back and Knuckle Up, but they were released out of order, and this all kind this sparked all kinds of pre-internet speculation. Um, so kind of getting into that, what, what were your thoughts when you saw that the movies were going to be released? Because it originally knuckle up was shot right after three ninjas and then kickback was kind of quote unquote the third movie but it was released as the sequel so what were your thoughts when that was like the process um it was it was definitely kind of weird um mm-hmm. I, I i'm not sure why they did that exactly i i wasn't i wasn't uh, invited to be part of that decision making process um it's like let's get colton here to weigh in on yeah what right. we're gonna do here <laughs> Um, my, I, I guess they, they, they probably thought that they could do a part three that was, that was an improvement on part two. Um, and so they decided to, to go ahead and film the third one first or film the third one before releasing the second one. Yeah. It was interesting. Cause I mean, as kids, there's no Google, there's no, you know, they're not dedicating magazines to tell us why three ninjas is being released out of order type of thing. So we're just like, why is this happening? And, and like you said, you could see the age difference in like you guys from the second one to the third one. So you're like, okay, something's going on. But of course we roll with the punches. So I, as kickback came out, I was like, yeah, I'll enjoy you guys went to Japan. Uh, what was that like, you know, going abroad and filming was, did you guys film in Japan? Or it was, was in, in Japan. Japan. Yeah. It was in several different Japanese cities. Um, and that was, that was an absolute blast. I, I loved every minute of it. How long did you guys uh, spend filming out there? Uh, it was six weeks in Japan and then another six weeks back in, in the States, in California. Okay. Okay. And, um, so like, what were some of like things you guys, what were some of your favorite things you guys did maybe on set or like when you were at, like off time, like get to enjoy the area and things like that? Um, one of the things I loved about it was that it was so safe. It was safe enough for a little 13-year-old kid to go out on his own and walk down to the arcade and uh, play video games that hadn't been released in America yet. Oh, man. You're right. Japan always got those games at least like a year before they even thought about releasing. So, yeah, you guys probably got some some pretty uh, heads up on some awesome games. Yeah, yeah. That was probably that was probably the coolest thing that happened in, in uh, you know, the off time. So were there any like culture shock moments? You're like, whoa, this happens over here, kind of a thing. Especially as a young kid, you you know. Um, not really. No, I I think I was mm-hmm. I was pretty well prepared for it because you know having having done karate for so many years, I was used to bowing to yeah. people and whatnot. That's that's true. That's true. I guess you had you definitely were familiar with the culture to some degree. Um. And that, and going back, and for and for a kickback, going back to the, uh, the the your room, it's the same room, but it's in a different house, right? Am I am I going crazy? 
or is the house the same the same house? Um, I, I think it's it's I thought, supposed to be the same house. I I feel like because when you guys order when you guys all order the the uh, plane tickets and the, this is getting super nerdy, but when you guys order the plane tickets in the kitchen, I was like, that's not the same kitchen that they blasted the guys in the first movie. But you go back up to your room, and it's the exact same setup, like you know, a trampoline, can can phone, yeah, everything. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I don't, it's like I don't know. This pulled one over on us because I didn't notice it until recently. So I was like, maybe he'll know. Maybe he can shed some light on that. I didn't actually remember that detail, but yeah, now that you mentioned it, I, I think you're right. It was filmed at a at a different house. Um, All right, well that's super. I just got super Star Trek nerdy <laughs> on you right there. So sorry, but uh, I had I had to get that one out. Um, but the other thing about Three Ninjas Kickback is uh, it was the only movie out of the whole franchise that got a video game adaptation. Let's murder Liza. Right. Um, it was in 1994 for SNES, Sega, Mega Drive, and and Sega CD. Yep. So, did you own the game? And play it yourself with friends? As uh, I sure did. Yeah, I had the <laughs> Sega CD version. Nice. Do you guys were you guys part of the production at all? Like voicing or anything like that? Or are they just kind of like here? We're gonna use your likeness and and buy. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't even know that it was <laughs> happening until it was released. Until you saw it, like you're walking through Walmart, you're like, "Whoa, yeah, yeah, is that me?" <laughs> <laughs> well, nice. So, did you beat the game? Was it hard? I've only played a little bit of it. I haven't beat it, but have you played all the way through it? I did. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I beat it. So, what was the experience like knowing that there are friends and maybe family out there who are playing a game with your your likeness in there? Thanks, thanks to you and your ninja skills. Uh, it was it was awesome. It was uh, maybe <laughs> even cooler than you know seeing myself in a movie was seeing myself in a video game. <laughs> I mean, I mean, super. You guys had every version: Super Nintendo, Sega, Mega Drive. You guys were all over on that game. So yeah, I uh, I'd be pretty pumped too, especially in that era uh, where everybody had multiple consoles. So I'm sure they had multiple versions of Three Ninjas Kickback, the video game. So for those who haven't checked it out, I'm sure there's an emulator, but you should go ahead, just go ahead and outright buy the game and enjoy it yourself. So I, like I said, I wasn't aware. Um, of the game at first when it first was released it was probably about a year or two later but yeah it was one of those it's like it was kind of in the middle of back when nintendo was making a lot of movies into games like we had adam's family this the nintendo game type of thing so um but when they had three ninjas come back kick back come out you're like you know what i think this uh this is gonna work and like i said i played a little bit of it so far i've enjoyed it so i have to go back and see if i can beat it um but now we're just gonna get into the third movie before we get into some other things uh three ninjas knuckle up you knew that when times got tough and there seemed no way out they'd be back yeah! and if that disc shows up at the hearing you're gonna be dog meat son there's my father what did you do to him I told you not to hire that indian in the first place we'll help you find your father joe you will? Cold, Rocky, and Tum Tum spring into action. Kids don't belong here. And gorillas belong in the zoo. What? Three ninjas knuckle up. We talked about how this movie was originally filmed right after Three Ninjas, but was released after Three Ninjas Kickback. And um, it, had, it received a PG-13, which maybe they were almost going for the first movie. But so for this one, it got the PG-13 movie. And I really, it had been a while since I had seen this movie because it came out when I, you know, I'd seen the first two movies and I think I had kind of gotten to middle school. So I thought I was too cool for school for Three Ninjas. I'm sorry. I, I ditched Three Ninjas by Knuckle Up, Knuckle Up, but I came, I came back to it strong and I realized that it actually is a great follow up to this, to the first one. Like it has the same tone in regards to you know with the native american culture you know the the protests and the commentary on that and some of the some of the imagery and some of the scenes are a little bit more uh the the action is a little more played up than it is given this kickback where it feels like it's a completely different movie in a different franchise to some degree right. different uh, actors and, and, some, and some yeah exactly so seeing knuckle up as, as uh at the i guess the actual sequel i see that yeah it really lives up to it so I guess working on that movie, one of the biggest things I talked about being the Native American commentary. What were some of the things you learned about, you know, Native Americans while working on the film? Um, I learned that when they are uh, singing their sacred songs, they can't stop in the middle. When when the when the scene is is when the director calls cut, they didn't they didn't stop. They had to they they finished their song. 
So when you guys were doing the ceremonial dance, like if you messed up, right, like you had, yeah, to, you had yeah. to finish it out just, you know, for respectful purposes and I guess uh, traditions too. Right. Yeah. Well, then that, that, that leads to my next question then. So what about uh, the ceremonial dance? Do you ever bust that out while you're like doing chores or, you know, walking down the street, walking down the street <laughs> or anything like that? <laughs> or even at weddings, it could be your kid and play dance. You have to get somebody else to do it with you. No way. That was a one time <laughs> thing. <laughs> It's a possibility. You never know. Sometimes a couple extra Jack Daniels might bring it out sometime in the future. Who knows? Um, <laughs> and one of the other things, too, um, while watching the movie is, like I said, like uh, it seems like you guys were doing your own stunts. You had your, your martial arts were stepping up its game. Did you feel that way, too, while you guys were doing it? Because it seems like you guys, some of your moves are super crisp. Not that they weren't the first one, but as you're getting older and your moves are getting better, you guys felt you're increasing your martial arts skills as well. Well, uh, I hate to spoil the illusion, but I think there were there was more more use of uh, stunt doubles in. Ah, uh, well then, yes, then I've been duped to some degree. <laughs> I've still, I still, there's still, still scenes clearly. It's you that you know you can tell you guys stepping up your game. Yeah, well, I hope so. Well, good. Well, well like a, um, some other things I I while watching the movie, I kind of just little things. Is it me or did was Rocky Rock? Did Rocky have braces? In and out of the movie. Oh. Did, did he have braces like at some point and then didn't have braces while you guys were filming? And this is told just like out of the blue. I just for my own when I was watching, I was like, is that does he have braces? And then like two scenes later, wait, his braces are gone. Did he have braces? Uh, you know, I don't remember, but that does that does ring a bell. So, yeah, that I think you might be right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Another Star Trek nerdy question. <laughs> I, I had to go deep on that one. Um and again, uh, with this movie incorporated Grandpa's Sweet Cabin, which to this day as a grown-up, every time I see it, it just looks like a nice cozy little location to go off and get off off the radar and enjoy yourself. Where where exactly is that cabin located where you filmed that? It's in Topanga Canyon. And it, and it was an awesome location. As far as I know, it's still there, yeah. But it was a it was a beautiful spot. And is that something like the studio owned, or they had like somebody like let them use it for the for the movies and things like that? Yeah, no the the owner rented it out for uh, for filming purposes. Yeah, I wonder if they I think de- I've seen it in another movie too. I wonder. I'm sure. I'm sure they they do because that area, like the uh, the location around it, like you guys use for your training and things like that, all in the same location right there around that cabin. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and so I wonder if they VRBO that thing because they would make a killing right now if they if they VRBO. I'd be getting my plane ticket right now to go out there to stay for a week uh, at Grandpa's uh, sweet, sweet cabin. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> you should t- call the guy up and maybe get a, break a deal with him right now. Right after, right after we do this, give him a call, strike a deal. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, one of the running things throughout the three movies that I think a lot of people turn into like a drinking game or just a fun game to spot uh, was to uh, play a game to spot when you see Grandpa's stunt double whenever he's doing <laughs> his ninja stuff, which is obviously we know that, you know, Grandpa's old. He's not going to be able to do some of these moves, but seeing that stunt double do some of those crazy moves and then quick uh, quick uh, cut back to Grandpa, you know, giving his, his crazy grin. It was just always, uh, as a kid, I always enjoyed like pointing that out. I was like, okay, there's a stunt double. There's Grandpa. There's a stunt double. Okay, there's Grandpa. So I'm sure... As people got older, they turned into a drinking game of some sort. That I just always thought that'd be uh, something they should make an official drinking game. Spot Grandpa's stunt double. You'd so, be very drunk by the end. <laughs> so yeah. So well. Uh, so that's uh, uh, things I want to talk about regarding the movies. Um, we have some. Um, we're gonna get to some Twitter questions and Twitter shoutouts. But before we do that, I actually have a little bit of a, a game that I want to play with you, and it's called "Did I Say That." And for those not familiar, the way this goes, this is a game for our celebrity guests where I will read three quotes from a Three Ninjas movie, and then, Max, you have to guess which line is yours that you said in the movie. So, okay. listeners, play along. Max, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, well, let's mortalize this because we're <laughs> going to jump right into the first Three Ninjas movie. The first quote is going to be, can I be Monster Destroyer or how about Super Killer? The second quote is going to be, where are the weapons? The slingshot, the knife throwers. The third quote, a ninja is honest and good. His mind, body, and spirit are one. He has self-control. He has discipline. So of those three quotes, Max, which one was yours? 
uh, B is the correct answer. Boom, you got it. Where are all the weapons, the slingshots, the knife throwers? Classic dad hiding them from you guys. Psh, didn't trust you guys. <laughs> all right, now we're moving on to the second round. We're going to Three Ninjas Kickback. The first quote, what are you going to do? Talk us to death? And second quote, a good ninja is always ready for battle or to give directions. And the third quote, let's murderize them. So which one was yours? Uh, the first one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that clumsy ninja pulling out the cell phone. What's a ninja doing with the cell phone anyway? He's going to be, he needs to be agile. He can't, there's no holder that I know of that that, that phone would have stayed in. So, yeah. <laughs> Perfect line. So next, we're on the final round. We're going three ninjas knuckle up. And the first one is, I don't want to die. I've never even hit puberty. The second one, that's the whole point. I didn't hear them. And the third one, it means peace, pizza brain. Ah, uh, yes, it means peace, pizza brain. Yes. Boom, three for three, folks. He still remembers his line. So if we were to have a three ninjas reboot, Max, you would be on point ready to get going so that was our that was our game of did i say that so max thanks for playing our our lovely game here hey i'm glad i won <laughs> we're gonna take a break for our new sponsor are you one of those people who just can't seem to remember your password you try everything you write it down but then you lose a piece of paper and internally freak out or you think you're some kind of savant and you think you can remember every password you've created over the years but you barely remember where the remote is so here's a better solution Go to the website or download the Vault app. That's V-A-L-T. Vault isn't like any other password app. They use visual aids that you will be familiar with to help access, synchronize, and store all your passwords in a few simple steps. So for two months of free data synchronization across all your devices, go to vault.io slash rewind. That's vault, V-A-L-T dot I-O slash rewind. Thanks. And now back to the show. The last of the things we're going to do here is we're, we're going to get into our Twitter poll and our Twitter questions from our listeners. So we did a Twitter poll to see which or which uh, Three Ninjas movie was everybody's favorite. Of course, we had Three Ninjas, Three Ninjas Kickback, and Knuckle Up. We left the high noon one out there because we know you weren't even in that. And none of us actually probably watched all of it anyway. So we left just the first three. And the Good choice. Yes, the resounding winner is Three Ninjas, the original Three Ninjas at 59%. Everybody who remembers Three Ninjas remembers the original. Some people didn't even know that Knuckle Up and High Noon existed, so we had to, we had to educate them on that. So uh, we let them watch it, but still, Three Ninjas was the uh, resounding winner. Yes, sir! Am I a nice guy or what? You're a geek. <laughs> For the Twitter poll, and now we're, uh, Max, we're gonna get cool. into As it should yeah, be. exactly. It's the best one, and I say I would go one, and then uh, knuckle up, and then kick back. Because as a kid, I grew up, it was one. Uh, kick back and then and then knuckle up but after recent watches knuckle up's got to move up a space so uh that's that's, that's oh, my right rankings on. but now we're going to get into twitter shout outs and questions Hoo-yah! from listeners and the first one goes out to jess jackson at skater girl 11 and her question is what do you think about the movies still being such classic among those who are in their 20s and 30s the movies are some, something we continue to rewatch and research. So I'm curious to know how you feel about being older and knowing we enjoy it so much. Um, I think it's amazing. You know, I, I certainly didn't expect it to achieve the kind of cult status that it, that it has. Um, and, you know, every time I hear about somebody my age showing it to a younger generation, keeping the tradition alive, I, I, I'm just thrilled about it. Yeah, and I see uh, from your Twitter account, like, you've, you've been retweeting a lot of, like, people who dedication, like, tattoos and art and just, like, maybe, like, writing articles or things like that, memes. Like, yeah, it is kind of crazy to see all the, how deep it goes at this point. Yeah, the tattoos are they, that blows me away. I saw the one that was uh, light up the eyes, boys. I'm like, oh my god, that is, that is the best tattoo I've seen in a long time. <laughs> yeah. So, it was so yeah, awesome. yeah. And so with that, like, um, have you thought about like maybe going to any comic cons and like doing like any panels or anything like that to kind of just you know, let the world know, yeah, you know, I, you love you love being known as Colt and you want to talk to people about it. Um, I can't say it has crossed my mind actually. Um, yeah. I don't know if I would feel right about doing that by myself without the other two. <laughs> yeah. 
it's a possibility. Well, you know, it's it's always possible in, in the in the future. It doesn't have to happen right now. But like I said, nostalgia is nineties nostalgia is in full throttle right now. So like, if you guys were to work something out, I'm sure there'll be more than plenty of people than plenty of people uh, lining up to uh, to listen to you guys talk about the old days. It could happen. Um, yeah. Never say never. That's right. Never say never. All right. Well, well. Thanks, Jess. That was her question. The next uh, question we have a couple people have a couple questions. This one is from MJ at Drummer Girl. She's got a couple questions. Uh, her first one is: If you were to go back, is there any scene that you would you have done differently, or a scene or a line that you didn't want to do? Um. Well, I I wouldn't do anything differently. I mean. It, do I think that I could do a better job now if I could magically transport my consciousness to my 11-year-old body? Yeah, probably. But no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to mess with it. It is what it is. Um, I, you know, I, I acted to the best of my 11-year-old ability. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think there's too much you can ask at that point to, uh, you know, like, can you do a better job of being an actor right now? Please, <laughs> a little bit better. Uh, no, yeah, you're right. You know, this, it is what it is. We all love it for a reason. I don't think if we change anything, if it would change our minds too much for the better or, or worse. So I think, like you said, it is what it is. So let's leave it how it is. So yeah, yeah perfect yeah. answer on that one. Her next question was, uh, what were your impressions of your co-stars when, and did it change by the time the movies ended? Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I had a positive impression of them from the very beginning and that, that didn't change. Um, I guess what, what did change is that we, we just became more, uh, you know, more brotherly, I suppose, by the end. Oh yeah. In, including all the bickering, you know, it wasn't just like a love fest the whole time. Oh yeah. I mean, any, any people around each other for any sort of amount of time will eventually start getting on each other's nerves. Um, and I guess, yeah, another thing want, they want to talk about too was like, you know, when they, when they did switch, uh, switch out Rocky and Tum Tum, Michael and, and Chad, um, people were asking like, what were the reasons? Do you remember the reasons why they initially weren't brought back for um, uh, kickback? Um, I know Michael just didn't want to do it. He was, he was kind of over it by the time we did knuckle up. Um, he, he wasn't an actor before he got picked out for three ninjas. Um, and I guess he, he, he just decided by that point that it wasn't for him. I mean, it's not for everybody. And he probably had his, he probably like a little burnout or just wanted to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think he was. You know. I, I don't want to speak for him. I don't really know. But I imagine he didn't really like the uh, attention that it brought. Mm, I see. Yeah. And I mean. And some people don't see that. People think that every actor wants to be like a Tom Cruise and be known by everybody in the world. And some people they just either want to act and not get known, or just not want to get known. <laughs> so it's a every. It's a everybody to to each their own in regards to that in, in that area. So yeah, yeah. No, that's totally understandable. And I think I read that. Chad was uh, going into – he was committed to a TV movie. Is that right or something like that? I, he I could, believe his schedule so. Wasn't yeah, working. yeah. I, that, that sounds right. I think he, he was – he had another offer at that time. OK. Yes. Well, that breaks the ice, everybody. For those who are wondering why, you know, Rocky and Tum Tum were places, you know, Michael just wasn't uh, feeling on the next round of movies and, and – and uh, Chad had something else uh, lined up. So nothing evil in the works. This is how it works in the business. You know, you hear think other things come up and people make decisions on their own to do other things. So perfectly, perfectly fine choices. Um, MJ's last question was, how did the Rocky Loves Emily song and dance come about? Emily, Rocky loves Emily, Rocky loves Emily. Um... I, I believe in the script it was written as like a conga rhythm. Um, <laughs> um, so it was kind of already built into the script that way. Uh, and then I think the, the director just kind of did a quick demonstration of what he wanted me to do, kind of like that, you know, Egyptian mm -hmm. thing. Uh, <laughs> a little walk like an Egyptian back in the day for those who can't remember. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's how that came about. That was That was kind of a... That was, that was kind of a rough day. I, I, I was, I, I, <laughs> I had to really get over my self consciousness to, to do that scene. Oh, really? You, you weren't up to doing the, the song and dance uh, for the scene? I, I, it wasn't, it wasn't something that I was really looking forward to. But 
<laughs> but it turned out to be a lot of people's favorite scene. So, I mean, it took on a life of its own. Even from that day on, like you'd hear it in school and stuff like that. People would reference it. Now even you see memes and it's a hashtag uh, every day somewhere. Rocky loves Emily. So as much as it was a rough day for you, it's made a lot of people's days better by uh, referencing it since then. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I, <laughs> by, you know, I don't mean it was really a rough day. I just mean that was, uh, you know, it was just a little embarrassing is all. <laughs> no, that's all right. A little kid performing in front of people, you, you know, I could definitely see hesitation for sure. Um, well, that was all of MJ's questions. We got a couple more questions from, from other listeners. We have Ash at Ash Loves KMB, and he says, uh, do you miss being in Three Ninjas? Like, uh, kind of like just the, the, either being on set or the um, the camaraderie or just being an actor and like working on set with, with those? Like, what was that like? Um. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to go back to being eleven years old again. I like being an adult better, but uh, but I definitely remember it fondly. And uh, do you ever watch? Do you feel like feel that way when you're like surfing through channels and it happens to be on TV? You watch a few minutes of it, kind of, kind of a thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I don't watch it though. <laughs> it's, well, um, you lived it, you filmed it, and I can definitely, I see why it's like, you know, it's it, it's different. We have different perspectives, so like watching it over and over is nothing for us. But you are in it, you've lived it, you know, it's a different angle and everything like that, so it's totally understandable. Um, we have Tiffany Clayton at Tiffany65516799. It says, is it a happy memory or would you rather not be recognized as Colt from Three Ninjas? No, it's it's definitely a happy memory. Um how often do you say people yell out Colt T on the streets? Never. That doesn't happen. No. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's not an automatic. It's like they would have to like see you kind of be like, okay, I think I recognize him. Like I remember him kind of a thing. Yeah. Like if, you know, once, once they know they can say, oh yeah, that looks like you. But no, generally speaking, I don't, I don't get recognized. Um, what, what was that question again? Can you read it again? It, no, it's just like is it a happy memory or would you rather not be recognized and like you said you're fine with it, it doesn't happen as often to like where people will just get sick of being like having their character name be called to them every day they go out to like make it a deposit at the bank or something like that so i'm sure yeah you you have like that nice fine window where like you said people when they do recognize you it all comes to them and they go they, they'll go crazy but like you still have that anonymity like you can still you know be this you know uh, cult, cult hero to all those 90s kids without me like over the top people just hounding you every day for like an autograph picture so just right. you know, taking away from your time right. I guess yeah. that those type of things yeah, no, so, I, yeah, I never reached question. that uh, Corey Feldman level, level of fame <laughs> it's okay it's <laughs> alright no worries uh, and the last question that we have is Jesse Parker at Jesse Parker 2914 uh, and she says uh, which one was one which one was your favorite film and what was the best part of being one of the three ninjas uh, my favorite film is definitely the first one. Um, but I think my favorite one to make was, was kick back because going to Japan was one of my favorite experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, the best part of being one of the three ninjas is, uh, being associated with people's, uh, happy childhood memories. Yeah, I mean, that has to be just because now, especially with social media, I'm sure you're getting like, you're seeing references all day, every day now. You just have to weed through the ones that you want to retweet or show some attention to because, yeah, there's so many of us uh, 80s and 90s kids who uh, just now want to share our share our appreciation to the uh, uh, to the actors and everybody who made our childhoods uh, a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, that was the uh, last question. Thanks to everybody for the Twitter questions. Uh, um, the last few things I want to go over before we uh, end the show here, Max, this is kind of talk a little about some things that you do outside, you know, of being known as three ninjas. Uh, I know you do, you used to do martial arts and, and music. So what, uh, getting into your music, you know, playing instruments or what is it that you're, you're doing at this point? Um, yeah, I, I, um, I was in a band for many years. I, I started playing guitar when I was eight, so I've been doing that almost as long as I've been acting. Um, so you're like the triple threat. You got the martial arts, the acting, and the uh, uh, and the guitar as that, well. That's right. Um, yeah, and when I when I quit acting, I guess as a teenager, um, 
my my thought was that I was going to be a rock star instead. Um, so I formed a band, uh, recorded some demos, played some shows, um, but recently have I, I've I've learned more about myself and discovered that that's really not not the lifestyle for me. You know, I um, I don't mm-hmm. I don't like hanging out at clubs. I don't like partying. So I would I would make a terrible rock star. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same way. I, I play guitar, you know, such a young age too. And I've always thought, I was like, man, I definitely want to be a rock star and travel the world and be like in a bus all the time. And then like, I would go on like a few vacations. And I'm like, oh, I don't really like traveling. <laughs> or like you said, hanging out in clubs till two, three, three o'clock in the morning after a certain age. I'm like, uh, oh, not as as appealing. So yeah, I'd be a terrible rock star. Right as well. on. I still uh, so, love music. Uh, what though. was the band that? Yeah, let's say what uh like what was the name of the band? What kind of music do you guys play? Uh, first band was called Hayden, H A D E N. Um, we were a metal band. Uh, nice. As as was the second band, which was called Vishuda. Um, yeah, we were we were doing uh like progressive metal. Okay, I was gonna say like some thrash metal, progressive. And what was the uh, the genre for those who who are in the know? Um. Yeah. So you you're still playing. So when you play now, you still play like some more metal type stuff, or do you kind of go all over the place? Um. I yeah. I I definitely still. Uh. I, that's that's still my my home base. Um, oh yeah. No. Me too. I I try to switch over to like the uh, the effects to like you know a little lighter stuff, some some ballad type chords, and I'm like, now nah, I always end up going back to the uh, the uh, the heavy thrashing. Start getting some of the. Uh, so the double kick drum in there, good stuff. That's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when you got it in your blood, you can't uh, you can't ignore it. Exactly. You already know. You already know. Well, awesome. Well, uh, what about martial arts as well? Are you still practicing? And what type of martial arts are, are you training in? Um, at the moment, I am training in uh, fencing. Oh, European. nice. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Um, since. Uh, like since September. Okay. All right. So you're getting the footwork down, all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and I've, I've, I've dabbled in uh, mixed martial arts, done some jujitsu. I did the Gracie combatives course with a friend of mine who's a blue belt. Um, and some, some Muay Thai. Um, and I also went like way traditional to the, to the, to the original Asian martial art, Kung Fu. Oh, uh, really? Okay. So you just dabble in all of them. Or almost yeah. all of them, yeah. All over. Yeah. Well, I love good. it all. I mean, you stay pretty busy, it sounds like. Do you have any, like, any other projects? Like, are you looking to get anything, like, any production like for acting or for producing any any uh, material? Or are you just maybe focusing on, like you said, the fencing, martial arts, and your own music type of thing? Um, I would... I would be opening. To, I, I would definitely be open to acting again if an opportunity arose. Um, but you know, it's it's not as easy as you might think. Having no, a no. having a twenty year old resume is about as good as having no experience at all. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, if, at this point in time, the way things are going, there's probably already a Three Ninjas reboot. So they may be calling you to play like the dad, or you guys could be like the three the three new thugs in the movie, possibly. <laughs> have the three had three old ninja, uh, uh, the three younger ninjas come back as the three thugs, like you guys had in the uh, multiple movies. Who knows? So there's still a possibility. There, there actually is something in the works. Um, I can't uh, can't say too much about it yet at this point, but uh, but. Uh, I heard from the producer over the summer, and she's been she's been cooking up a new Three Ninjas story, and uh, feels Very like cool. now is the right time to make it happen. Well, like I said, it's it, it's always time for to to strike the iron while while it's hot, or at least when it's hot again. And nostalgia is making all of our '90s movies awesome and hot again. So, like you just said, more than likely we're gonna see something. So who knows? We could be uh, seeing you, Max, or at least hearing you. Uh, in an upcoming project with three ninjas but either way where can people follow you on social media if they want to like maybe listen to your music or just you know follow you see what you're up to um i'm uh, at real max slade on twitter um i don't have any music uh, available online yet but i will i will someday i'm uh, i'm building a, a studio in the garage Nice, yeah. I um, I mean, I use SoundCloud just to throw up some random stuff here and there, just mess around. Even if it's not a whole song, play a couple chords just so I don't forget it, kind of a thing. 
Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it would be awesome if you end up doing something like that, put it up on uh, your website or the uh, Twitter and we'll let people know about that. Um, but again, that was pretty much everything I wanted to go over. Max, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to come on the podcast today and not only making my 90s nostalgia dreams come true, but everybody else who's listening to this, who've been just kind of waiting anticipation to hear some things we talked about in regards to three ninjas and about you yourself so again can't thank you enough for for coming on today yeah man my pleasure thanks for having me yeah well hopefully we can have you uh, on again soon we'll do a, a different episode of some sort so uh everyone stay tuned for that make sure you go on and follow max on all the social media accounts and keep up with what he's up to don't take his persona just follow him and see what he's up to and but for everybody else <laughs> thanks for tuning into this episode of the be kind and rewind podcast make sure you subscribe like follow and rate the podcast on itunes soundcloud speaker youtube and poop culture podcast network at poopculture.com also Follow the podcast on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Be Kind Rewind Pod for all of your nostalgic needs. So thanks and be excellent to each other. Cheers, man. What you just heard was a podcast in the Poop Culture Extended Universe. For more great podcasts, make your way to www.poopculture.com.